Hey everybody, it is Scott the Steenroller Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the one and only Steenroller free play of the day. As always, if you're digging what we're doing, having a little fun, we'd appreciate it if you'd simply give us the old thumbs up, give everybody a chance to do it here right at the beginning, get ready to smash that sucker. Here we go, three, two, one, smash! Smash away, everybody! Beautifully done, thank you very much. As always, make sure you check out Scott and I doing our daily show, Winners and Winners Radio, Right here on the YouTubes, you can also download it in podcast form, your favorite podcast platform, um, or you can actually listen to it on the radio. Uh, coming out, uh, it is uh, streamed through WWPR out of Tampa at 3 p.m. Eastern, excuse me, 4 p.m. Eastern each and every weekday. All right, and of course, check out winnersandwinners.com. Deep dives into every game every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mm, put your plays in the comment section, whatever you're on got something cooked up put up in the comment section you get them right we'll give you the shout out you get enough of them right you could be the capper of the day okay well i think i've uh, about given you enough things to do uh let's go in and talk about yesterday's game shall we we cap this at 43 and a half and i gotta tell you in real life uh it was down to 42 and a half i got it at 42 and a half as the uh as uh, the Rebels were a nine-point favorite, a little bit of drop in the total. But I capped it at 43 and a half, and he, i got to be honest, he came out, Mississippi scored that uh, first touchdown right off the bat, misses the extra point. I said, you know what, I don't know how, and I don't know why, but that's going to come back to fuck us. <laughs> it absolutely did. As the number lands on 43, just a little ad insult to injury, Mississippi keeps its starters in all the way to the end of the game. They drive, and they die at, what, the 15-yard line there. Just needed one one of those runs to break out, but couldn't happen. So, oof. Tough beat at 43 and a half, but on with today's action we go. Uh, no more football for a minute, guys. We're going to have to turn our attention to the National League East as the Washington Nationals travel down to hot Atlanta to take on the Braves. Espino, Paulo Espino goes for the Nats against Max Fried. Uh, for the Bravos, we're going to play the home team here on the run line, minus 115. We're going to fade this Nats team that has decided their season ended uh, about three weeks ago, the middle of August. They've uh, gone just 3-12 and 12 in their last 15. Now, Espino, I did a nice job in the pen early in the season for the Nationals. He even made a couple of good starts when they first made the switch, but he has stunk up the joint lately. Uh, the Nats are just 1-5 in, in his last six starts, posting a 6-5-7 ERA, 1-6-1 whip. The Braves, you know what? Braves got some issues of their own, kind of leaking oil coming down the stretch. They've lost eight of their last 12. But as far as Freed goes, he's been the stopper. Now, except for the last game out, tough loss to Scherzer and the Dodgers, uh, he actually gave up just three hits in six innings. Unfortunately, two of them were homers, and the Braves offense did a zippo against uh, Mighty Max. Uh, but before that, the Braves had won his previous five starts. And in those six games, he has absolutely been dealing 1.62 ERA, 0.79 whip. Like I mentioned, the Braves are all of a sudden in a dogfight. Uh, they're in the East with the uh, with the Phillies. And uh, you've even got the Mets starting to take a look as well. They need to right the ship and right about now. I think at least for a day, they get that done behind Max Freed. Give me the Atlanta Braves on the run line, minus the 115. At the end of that one, you guys can join me as we pick up our winning tickets and head back to the window. All right, kids, you know how I did yesterday. Let's see how uh, y'all did, shall we? Uh, by the way, the only comment that tickled me today, somebody said my voice hurts their ears. I don't know what to tell you. It's the only one I got. So maybe sound down. Put on some tunes, maybe some nice Pink Floyd in the background. Whatever you need to do, man. Um, Greg Gillings, nice day today, going three and one plus one ninety. Doc Brown goes two and one plus ninety. But we had some successful cappers out there, guys. Sean O'Reilly going one and zero oh plus five hundred. He had Molly Uganda under in the World Club qualifier. Brandon Zerfers going one and zero oh plus five hundred. L.A. Dodgers first five run line. The old T train. Figured out how to bet the Boston Red Sox. First five, one and no plus 500. He had Red Sox first five run line. That was, uh, then things uh, kind of blew up there uh, later in the game. Antonio V, he goes one and no plus 500. Louisville, mm, Ole Miss under. Steve the Godfather Godon goes two and no plus 290. 
Meech goes 2 and 0 plus 200. The Butcher going 1 and 0 plus 500. He had Ole Miss first half minus 6. And Brianna Anderson going 2 and 0 plus 200. Brianna's one of those people that got that good number at 42 and a half and she had Ole Miss to cover the 10 and go over 42 and a half. Nicely done Brianna and nicely done to the rest of you, man. Let's see. We've got a uh, eight-way tie for capper of the day. So here we go. Congratulations to Sean, Brandon, T-Train, Antonio, Stephen, Meech, The Butcher, and Brianna, because you eight are all the cappers of the day. Well done to you all, and well done to the rest of you that made a little money out there. All right, it's a way to start the week. Let's keep it rolling here, guys. Good luck on all your plays today. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money when you head back to the window. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.